Hello, comic fans. Here's Earl Grey. Today I want to talk about one titan of European comics who has carved out his very special niche uh, in, in comicdom, uh, Jean-Yves Mitton. Um, and as you can see by the amount of stuff that I've read uh, from him, uh, I'm very fond of his uh, historic pulp exploitation comics. What I do mean by that will be uh, I, I try to make it clear uh, what his comics are all about. Um, yeah, maybe we should start with Chronic of the Barbarians. Um, and as you can see, uh, he doesn't shy away from violence and um, sex, to be honest with you. So uh, this will be an interesting video, I guess. And uh, this uh, is collected here in Germany into um, yeah, hardcovers. Uh, each of them contains three albums. Um, and we have... These books are very nicely made. Uh, the paper is always a matter of discussion, but I like this uh, bit... Yeah, rougher, muddy paper right there. And we have an essay in each of these books about the, how the Normandy become, became the Normandy, the northern part of France, uh, part of the Viking Empire. And here are, this is the colorist of the stuff. Um, and here we have him, Jean-Yves Mitton. And there are interviews in these books uh, how uh, about his take. And this is the series uh, that I still have to get and read, but I will for sure, especially since uh, the pirate or female pirate of the Baltic Sea, and this is my region here. <laughs> we live close to the Baltic Sea, so I'm uh, very interested in that series. But you don't have to mistake um, Jean-Yves uh, Mitton's stories as lessons in history. Uh, as he says, uh, his books are not for school. Uh, he wants to give you a spectacle and mixes and blends uh, historic facts and historic backgrounds for good measure with his own fantasy. And um, the deeper the stories are in the past, the more crazy the stuff uh, went and the more freedom he felt to to invent uh, his own stories in these um, yeah, within these backgrounds. Here we have uh, somewhere in the Normandy uh, monastery and this is our main hero, this um, boy in the choir there and <laughs> has uh, this particular aim to go to the toilet while uh, singing. So he wants to look <laughs> on the toilet uh, in this kind of uh, yeah, medieval porn. And, um, but this saves, and yeah, for particular reasons. And this, uh, but this saves his life because the monastery is uh, conquered by Vikings. And look just at her uh, at their helmets. Look at these horns here, for an example. I mean, uh, I don't have to tell you, and, and fancy stuff like this here in particular, I don't have to tell you that this is pretty far from uh, being historically accurate. <laughs> but uh, Jean-Yves Mitton is just a beast. If you think about how much stuff he drew, uh, over his whole career. But his his stories are very exciting, uh, spiced with, uh, as I said, it, uh, violence and sex. And so it, it's a bit voyeuristic for sure uh, to read his stuff here. But hey, uh, we read comics. We want uh, exciting out there pictures, even though maybe the violence here in these books are not uh, for everyone, I have to say. On the other hand, even though uh, the uh, a lot of the stuff here isn't historically uh, from uh, 
historian's point of view, uh, not accurate, the feel of dread and uh, the violence and the, the pain uh, a lot of the people had to suffer. This is not so far from reality, I think. So. Yeah, uh, wonderful story. Uh, the, this boy here in the monastery, I don't spoil anything uh, because uh, you would see it pretty quickly in, in the story. Um, is for some reason mistaken later on, or he takes on the identity of Life um, Erickson, the um, first discoverer of America. I mean, this is, sounds a bit harebrained, but he used it almost that you can, uh, in a fashion that you can believe it in the story. Um, and uh, in the end, it will uh, get an interesting um, twist on top of it. Here we have a bit of about Life Erickson, the real historic figure, or uh, as as much uh, painters uh, imagined him. And here you have all. Again, these helmets who are very probably uh, very far from the historic truth. On the other hand, I've seen helmets with horns or some kind of uh, things on top of them in a museum. So I'm not so sure about all the stuff, but if <laughs> we have uh, some years later, this is uh, the second part, uh, we have um, some kind of meeting between uh, the power, uh, the the man in power, and then uh, this woman here um, rides into the church, and yeah, this is a feast for Jean Yves Mitton if he really manages to to write uh, himself in this kind of corner. He is very happy to to draw himself out of that corner. Um, yeah, there's a bit of some kind of magic, but he tries to explain it afterwards. And yeah, the whole story is really a, a feast, a, a spectacle. And even though a lot of the stuff here is maybe something that you expect from a story about fake life Erickson, um, it's it's a very entertaining read and uh, especially in this uh, two volume slipcase edition this is really fantastic um yeah continuing with the next slipcase here why victus and yeah, you have to decide for yourself if you want to put a slipcase with this pine picture in on your shelf. I really think this is beautiful. Um, and on the back we have an overview of all the albums that are contained here in this uh, five collected edition slipcase. So in uh, each in each of these um, collected editions, we have three albums, plus uh, a lot of essay stuff. As a boy or young adult, I read uh, similar stories as prose novels um, that took me back into medieval times or ancient times, but without pictures. And here, uh, Jean-Yves Mitton uh, doesn't give us only stories, uh, that are very gripping, exciting, and emotional, and, and just spectacular. Uh, but fun pictures, beautiful pictures. Uh, he's a fantastic draughtsman in a very classic style. Uh, but like, uh, or like in these um, prose novels, he uses the same uh, tricks, uh, for instance, um, taking one character or tiny group of characters as the focal point 
uh, to portray a whole era uh, in history. And here it is mainly this young lady here, um, Ember or Boetica. Um, she was caught as uh, in, in Brittany and deported to Rome. Uh, there she became a slave, but uh, yeah, and, and meets Julius Caesar of all people. And that this will be the last meeting between them. Uh, I don't want to spoil you anything, but uh, it's clear that she has a long heroin journey uh, in front of her. And uh, in which we have a very good uh, overview about uh, the the Gallic War of Julius Caesar and why and, and the military's um, st uh, strategics and, and politics of all his endeavors. So this is really an epic tale and with um, very strong pictures and wild, wild imagination. And uh, even though De Bello Gallico is um, a main source for the writer, Simon Rocca, Rocca who um, actually has this name here, George Ramaioli, but when he that's, uh, uses this name when he draws uh, comics, but when he writes them, he's uh, Mr. Rocker. So, um, and for him, um, De Bello Gallico by Julius Caesar uh, himself was one of the main sources, but uh, he took off obviously his reports of the war with more than just a grain of salt, um, because these were uh, reports uh, for yeah, the Rome, uh, the politicians in Rome to, to uh, and, and sometimes to embellish his endeavors in, in uh, France, of course. So, highly report, uh, recommended uh, the series here. It's, it's really a feast for the eye and, and the story gives you some insights into, I guess, uh, into that time, even if you have, of course, uh, to see that this is 50% at least uh, pure fantasy and, and fiction. Um, and this is even true for a book like this here, even though Ben Hur is almost an all ages book. And this is something special for Jean Yves Mitton who always uh, likes to spice his comics uh, with some adult stuff here. But here he was very true to, um, by the way, I don't understand why they have to magnify drawings that were obviously scanned in a not sufficient quality. I mean, I love the drawings of Miton very much, but they have to see that this is pixelated as hell here. Um, yeah, but uh, these books are really good. So uh, some occasional um, flaw uh, stands out even more. So uh, Ben Hur, this is an adaptation of that novel and actually of that movie, uh, that famous movie that came out in the 60s or uh, was it early 50s? I don't know. Yeah, here we have even earlier movie adaptations of Ben Hur. Um, that story by Lewis Wallace. Lou Wallace here. Yeah, and he uh, keeps his comic here very true to these, uh, through the novel and the movie in a way um, of this count in Judea who uh, becomes a slave and then a hero and yeah, it's again a hero's journey, this kind of adventure and then he meets Jesus 
The subtitle for the original novel was a story about Christ. Uh, so uh, this is a part in the story as well um, to confront the heretic uh, beliefs of the Romans uh, with all these uh, um, strange uh, stuff like reading in innards or believing in, in many different gods and confronting this with the true uh, religions or the upcoming Christianity because uh, we will see Jesus Christ here as a real comic character and yeah um, but like in almost all other comics uh, Jean-Yves Mitton is very skeptical towards religion in, in every shape or form uh, so you have to see this in a, in a context and, um, yeah, and it's a really good and true adaptation of Ben Hur, I think. Um, I can't remember really, um, the novel, even though I'm pretty sure that I've read it. I've, uh, watched the movie for sure, but this is 30 years ago. So pardon me if my memory doesn't serve me correctly uh, here. Okay. Um, <laughs> and as, yeah, sometimes uh, Jean-Yves Mitton goes really to town with certain parts in the storytelling. These are the very first four albums of Messalina uh, telling us the story of this lady here um, how she gained finally the uh, throne in the in Rome, and uh, yeah, it seems that only two albums are still missing. Honestly, this is one of my least favorite uh, stories of uh, Jean Yves Mitton because here he, he yeah, it's just too much of um, sex and. Uh, Usually it doesn't hurt if it's part of the story, but here uh, it's really yeah, like a porn movie where you have one scene after the other and very, very little story in the middle. And uh, I mean, if you if this is your kind of thing uh, and, or if this is what you want uh, to have in that comic, you get more than just what you want. Uh, this is just one of the double pages in which we don't see people uh, having sex with each other. Um, but you can see, of course, here beautiful black and white drawings and a good thing that they left it this time here without colors. In the other comics, I would like to have seen them uh, without colors sometimes, but quite frankly, uh, uh, to have this colorama, um, technicolor spectacle, full movie approach, historic pulp exploitation feel of Miton, the colors are sometimes really an integral part of all the stuff here. It's n it's not bad by any means. Um, and maybe I have to read the stuff here again. It's uh, it's just maybe I wasn't in the mood. I wanted to have more some kind of story, and uh, yeah, a great great story is Quetzalcoatl. Um, to be honest with you, it's it's a while since I read this seven album. They came out here by Kult Edition. The last one was published by Phoenix Comics. Quetzalcoatl is about the conquistadors or the, yeah, the conquering of the um, Aztec Empire and the fall of the Aztec Empire, of course. The only thing is, uh, with this comic here that is maybe not, yeah, fantastic is that you know right from the beginning just because of the story facts how the story will end and tragic so i don't spoil anything for you you know how this stuff ends uh, the uh, first um, 
Spaniards here were uh, met with a lot of friendliness and naivety, of course, and uh, but they weren't the, the these promised gods, as you can see. Uh, it's of course Jean Yves Mouton again. Uh, all over, but this is really a, a gripping, emotional, sad story about yeah how all the stuff here ended, and this is the cover of uh, album seven. So yeah, you know already how this uh, ends. Um, just for complete sake, uh, this is Attila Mon Amour about the Huns, and again we have a female central character that ties uh, this long-reaching stuff here together, Lupa. Um, I don't want to go into detail uh, about this story here, because it's not drawn by um, Jean-Yves Mitton, uh, but drawn by Frank Bonnet, and um, pretty close to the style of Jean-Yves Mitton, but it's not really as good as uh, his stuff, even though he trusts everything uh, to give us the full Mitton experience. Um, I really can recommend this book here, but if you haven't read anything by Jean-Yves Mitton, I would rather uh, say that you should check out some of his stuff. So, which is a good segue to this uh, slipcase, the third slipcase that I own for now by this publisher Cult Comics, uh, The Survivors of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, I really don't know what I'd do with this one because it's a collection of three books here. Um, and the slipcase is beautiful, mind you. Um, very nice covers here. But only the first one here is drawn by, uh, written and drawn by Jean-Yves Mitton. The other two are um, drawn by one Felix Molinari. And when he really tries hard, he can come with some sufficient drawing. But even when you look at this um, cover illustration, you will ask yourself, what's with her legs there? Uh, I mean, there's not really space for them. And it's really a, a downer when you have read the first part of uh, Drawn by Jean-Yves Mouton and then you come to uh, this uh, stuff here by Molinari, who has some kind of um, back history in comics. Uh, he, uh, if I understood here, he's this Molinari. Uh, he was uh, the main artist behind this French superhero comic. Never heard of Superboy before, but that's where. How? Uh, that's why these essays are there to inform us of uh, um, about stuff that we haven't heard before. But yeah, quite frankly, uh, the stuff that is drawn by him is very skippable, uh, especially if you have seen all the beautiful drawings by Mitton before you. You can recognize clearly all the characters because here of this I um, fall a uh, blindfold of that man and so on and but here's not only the stalp, uh, story pulp uh, but the whole drawings are pretty pulpy in uh, as in not really up to the highest level and even the storytelling um, is especially in the second volume and uh, in the third volume it's it, beca it became a bit better um, is not really up to to the uh, not at all <laughs> to Mitton level uh, the start here in in the third volume is pretty okay because we have now a detour to um, America and, and slave, uh, the, the whole slave trade, and which is very sad and gripping affair. And our main hero 
has kind of a hand in that one as well but yeah i'm i'm really i think i will sell the slipcase with my uh volume two and three on ebay and i guess i will find someone who's interested in that uh, who has just bought volume one and now wants to have the the full package and i really can fully understand that but quite frankly, the probability of me rereading uh, these two volumes by Molinari is almost nil. Um, I would rather recommend just to pick up the first volume and leave it with that, because this is a pretty uh, self-concluded story, even though we have obviously some open threads dangling. But look at the art, uh, in especially if you see, uh, think of the art that I've shown you before uh by Molinari and this is here Jean-Yves Mitton and this is drama this is spectacle this is beautiful and uh, this series really could have ended after three albums with any kind of problem without any kind of problem um so Highly recommend it, uh, actually, uh, to pick this first volume up, uh, but skip the last ones um, and hunt down all the other stuff by Jean-Yves Mitton. Um, I don't think that you would have uh, any regrets after reading them. Uh, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.